Hey guys, it's Tiny Tom Logan back with another video for you and today we are quite literally going to be talking about MSI's new graphics cards, the Supreme. I'm not sure if there should have been an E on the end. Anyway, I could quite easily make a video which was clickbait about why are they launching new cards and all of that sort of stuff and in reality the businessman inside me would say that would be the thing to do but then the enthusiast inside me thinks or oh, no the like the the real me wants to have a discussion about why they've done this why i think it's a bad idea but then also try to give you guys a little bit of information about the sort of things that go on in the background which may not have given them much choice so it's a bit of an educational one. It's very much a TTL style, get a brew, talk down the pub kind of scenario. And we will look at these epic cards and then discuss why I think they maybe should have waited a little bit longer to have launched them. Okay, so there will be no testing today, and I apologise for that, although there is more information on the website, as there always is. Uh, and that is plain and simply because I could not get the work done for NDA because of the workload with the Radeon RX 6800, 6800 and 6800 XT launch. Please don't fall off. I had them balanced there perfectly. Anyway, they're there just so that you can see them in the background. Because I always used to get grief about NVIDIA stuff being in the background. So I've purposely put uh, red team graphics cards in the background until they end up in a water block in another rig, which is literally what I've got to do after I've made this video. So the Supreme. I'm going to call it the Supreme Prime because the Supreme sounds wrong. But they are beautifully crafted graphics cards. Now the 3090, which I've got in my hand, GBP is 1670, 1670, and the 3080, which is in there, is over 800 pounds. I can't remember whether it's 806 or 816, so let's just say it's over 800, low end of over 800. And the cat is literally sat there waiting for me to pick her up to come up again. Um, the knob's coming in. If she jumps up, she jumps up. Anyway, they're beautifully crafted, three pin, uh, three eight pins on it for power. There's the two style brushed aluminium backplate and it's the intricacies on this backplate and the knife edges and the machining is just so nice. I actually like the way that they've put the Dragon logo on the back as well. It's basically, as you would expect a 3090, but it's a ramped up 3090 and it's the one above the Trio. So you have the Trio X, this goes above that. Um, I'm not going to go too much into everything and, and all that's underneath because I don't want to make this a review. I'm literally just trying to give you some skirts about it and then we are going to discuss my thoughts on the card and give you some uh, stuff that's going on in the background. Um, the RGB on the top is okay, the side is mm, nice. It's quite safe, and I still don't think if you were going to vertically mount this, there's enough RGB on the front face. I personally think this is a card that deserves to be in a system with just a white LED or white LED, so it lights up all of the machining and stuff that's on it. Um, and I don't think it belongs in a rainbow esque rig, but that's just my personal preference. You buy it, you can do what you want, quite clearly. Uh, but anyway, it's beautifully crafted, weighs a ton. Um, and is a really exquisite top of the line graphics card. It feels, other than the lack of RGB, and this might be a bit of a contradiction, feels like quite a grown up design. So in that regard, the aesthetics, I like it. I personally would have had more RGB on the end of the fans and stuff. And yeah, just because it would have looked better lit up. Now I'm not saying it needs to be in rainbow puke mode because my personal system, I have lit white. So uh, yeah, that's where my thought process is with that. So the card itself, or the cards, is a very difficult time to be launching new 3080 and new 3090 graphics cards when there are still 
outstanding pre-orders. Now, some of that comes down to uh, e-tailers' faults, taking too many pre-orders. Some of it comes down to NVIDIA clearly not being able to get make enough of them or didn't start making them soon enough or delay the launch enough. Uh, and then some of it's kind of down to MSI. Now, I've, I've got a feeling that a lot of these may have been ready for launch and they probably should have launched them at launch time because Asus did with the Strix and Gigabyte did with the uh, Aorus Extreme. So MSI are a bit late to the party. But for this to be launched two days after the 6800 launch, in MSI's kind of defence, there aren't any of these 6800s around. They all sold out pretty much instantaneously. And I'd, I'd be surprised if there was a few hundred in the UK in total. So uh, stock was very, very limited for those. But my, my thought process for this, maybe they should have waited a bit longer, is it didn't come out at launch. And now there are a lot of the uh, cheapest 3080s are the ones that are heavily on back order, the ones that hit MSRP. Now this is the bit where we get a bit political and the reason for me wanting to make the video. The ones that do hit MSRP, they're actually struggling with a bit at the moment because the margins are so incredibly tight, especially once they've been made, flown into whatever country it is because of shipping problems with COVID and stuff. Everything's going air freight, which is expensive. And then it gets to a distributor and they add their margin onto it, which then goes into an e-tailer and they add their margin onto it. And it pretty much means that the manufacturers are pretty hard going. Now, NVIDIA do make them have an MSRP card. And I say make them, and I say that in loose terms because it's all kind of, it's encouraged by ways of if you don't have an MSRP card, then you don't get any allocation. So they, they can't tell them what to price them at, but they can not give them any product. So it kind of works in that way. So they, they all try and have that MSRP card, which lots of you at home <laughs> have been buying. And the problem is the margins are so tight that they don't particularly make any money out of them. So in their defence on these, there is more margin on them, so you can understand them wanting these ones to be available for people to buy because they can make money. And at the end of the day, if they don't make money, you don't get graphics cards in a couple of years' time because they go bankrupt. The other side of it is that in reality, if you have paid your, um, for your pre-order and stuff, then the 3090 core in this one and the 3080 core in that one could have gone on a cheaper card and you could have got your graphics card cheaper. Uh, oh, sorry, sooner. You could have got your graphics card sooner. And I kind of think that that's what should be happening in reality. And if, if, the thing is, if you go to a store and you've paid your, um, uh, let's say you've paid your money for a, a, a reference, not a reference, yeah, a reference is still reference design, MSRP card, and you can't have it and you're not meant to have it for six weeks and then one of these pops up and it's like 200 pounds more expensive it would even me it would leave a bad feeling in my mouth and that's one of the reasons why i think they probably should have waited with these because they're putting a top end of the line product out there now and loads of people are still waiting for these ones down here and but like i said they they kind of they're not making any money on those. And the uh, shipping prices have gone up, GDDR6 and GDDR6X prices have gone up. Um, the dollar price is tanked because of all the election stuff. So it, it, it has made companies' lives incredibly, incredibly difficult. Oh, you're there now, you're coming up. Now, see, she made it in the end. She had to go all the way around, but she got there. Um, and people were worried about your tail last time. Uh, so there is, there, there's that side of it as well, and, and that would be where I would have gone as well. I personally would have suggested that they should have waited until at least January next year to have launched these so that they could... Come on, Nobs. Everyone gets worried. No, no, let go. Everyone gets worried. Come on. There you go. Um, I think they should have waited until January to have launched these so that a lot of the pre-orders had kind of been uh, taken care of. But I don't think that they've been left with much choice in reality because they do need to start getting things out. So I've completely lost my terrain of thought. Thank you very much, Nobs. So as it stands, across all of the brands, I don't think we're going to have stock sat on shelves in e-tailers 
probably until the end of Q1 next year, the start of Q2. I don't think there's going to be enough stuff flowing through to um, exceed demand until about that point at very least. Uh, so someone might kind of want one of these. Now, if you think about it, and this again it opens up uh, people saying about the other form of scalping that got accused, but if that one is 800 and something quid and someone's selling a vanilla one for 900 on eBay and you manage to get one of these from an e-tailer, you could actually end up buying one of these top-end ones cheaper than you could have got a low-end one on eBay from a scalper. So there's that side of thing, but I still don't think that's a particularly good enough reason. Um, but anyway, so I wanted to give you some of my thoughts uh, about like the background and stuff. They are beautiful cards, beautiful cards. I think personally they should have waited a bit longer. That's also why I've made this video today and I've not like put them in the rig and started testing them and done a full review on them because at the end of the day, I know it's going to hit YouTube and the comments are going to be full of people saying, ah, oh, but they've not done this and they've not done that and they should have done this. And the thing is, is that all of those people, while they might take their point a little bit too far and almost get to the point of aggression and kind of like, it's almost like you're instantly offended, that sort of thing, I thought I'd have a little bit of discussion about it and give you some other points as well so that you can kind of get a bit of a feeling about the stuff that goes on in the background. So... Uh, they are on sale, they are beautiful cards, they are more expensive than the uh, Trio X um, and that is, that is pretty much it because I, I just felt that today I didn't want to put any extra time into reviewing these, mainly because I can't. I've got a 6800 water cord build to do, I've got other graphics cards to do, I know I've got other 6800 vendor cards landing. There's a lot of stuff and I just think at this present moment in time plonking an expensive 3080 and 3090 review into the YouTube feed just isn't going to get any traction. So I thought it was a good excuse for us to have kind of a TTL subscriber video style chit chat, explain some stuff, show you that they're out there if you're actually interested and you want them. And I, I can understand why a lot of you may want to instantly go and like hurry out and try and get one before they uh, go out of stock, which they quite quickly could do but then also give you a bit of balance. So it's not a sales pitch, it's not a clickbait, do not buy these, what were they thinking pitch. It was a, here's some information, uh, I'm giving you that and you can make your own mind up and then that's where you can go with it. So it's up to you peeps. Let me know what you think though, because that's gonna be the critical thing. Let me know underneath, let me know on Twitter, let me know on my Facebook page. Uh, there's quite clearly going to be some nice pictures of these going up on Instagram as well. If you don't follow me on there, click the bell, do all of that sort of stuff. But for now, this is Tiny Tom Logan. I will actually, by the way, because these will leave now. Uh, people think that reviewers get to keep everything that lands. These are going and are booked to go back to MSI on Monday morning. And it's Friday today. These are booked to go back with MSI on Monday morning and then maybe if they send them back to me later, I will give them a full review and put them on the website. But for now, I just, in all reality, I just don't have a great deal of time to be able to commit to it. So we've had our chit chat. Thank you very much. Stay safe, wear your mask, do all of that sort of thing. Uh, protect your loved ones. And uh, this is Tiny Tom Logan with another video for you. Out. Ding. Love you, sis. Thank <laughs> you.